Here we are, big wide open space, nice and safe. We've got a reproduction medieval breastplate there. Bit of a later period though. Yeah, a little bit later. Um, you're looking around sort of early 1400s, this sort of shape. We've got some mail behind it and then some linen padding and then a lump of meat, just where <laughs> the heart is. So what's your betting? You're gonna try and shoot that. What's you, what, what do you reckon is gonna happen? Uh, I'm thinking with the shape, mainly deflections, but it all depends on where I hit it and what I, angle. I have more confidence in you. <laughs> I think it might actually stick in and penetrate a bit. So we'll see. I'm gonna step back and I'm gonna let you unleash the war bow. Sure. I reckon that did more damage than you thought. Look, look at that. Wow. It certainly punched through. So you've got him in the armpit here, which is pretty <laughs> nasty. The, you know, we skipped off here. This is in the belly. It, you talked about the kind of can opener effect, didn't you? So, yeah. I mean, you can see the, the diamond shape of the, uh, the holes. And if you look at it from the reverse side, it's almost like little triangles where it's starting to peel yeah, itself yeah, open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind um, of, hasn't just punched a hole, it's sort of punched uh, quarters out and yes, then peeled yeah. back and rolled back. I mean, I don't know whether it's actually gone through the mail there. Can't really, uh, maybe maybe the mail actually stopped it. Perhaps. I think the, the shape of the, the hole, it's not penetrated any further than maybe the shoulder of the head. But the impact, the sheer impact is gonna knock it you backwards. Bit, yeah. yeah, it moved, <laughs> so. And then down here as well, we got some, that's two layers and that's done a lot of damage, but maybe saved the bloke's life, I don't know. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's definitely not penetrated far enough to cause injury, Yeah, let alone death. <laughs> but even so, it didn't just skip off. This is a slightly more modern breastplate. It's made with modern materials, obviously, because it's a reproduction, but just the energy of that longbow arrow going into it, that would have knocked a man down, I would have thought. It may not have killed him. I believe him so, yeah. It'd certainly, um, certainly rock you, It'd make you think twice. And when you combine that with the energy of a, a, a cavalry charge, for example, it's going to be an even more catastrophic hit. So a couple of arrows and then, you know, well, I wouldn't want to be a knight wearing that, <laughs> charging at you. You'd have hit me several times, sport my day, sport my <laughs> aim. Probably killed me about 100 yards before I got to you, but um, that shows the incredible power of a war bow against the armour of the day. Yep. How are the arrows as well? They're all they? fine, yeah. There's, yeah? No, there's nothing... no obvious damage done to them. So not even the tips, there's no, no tips? No blunting on them, no. Nothing at all, wow. So they've actually, they could just be picked up again on the battlefield yeah. and reused. Just pulled straight out and then straight away, ready to go. Wow. Again. That's the, that's the armour that's contemporary-ish to the actual war bow. I'd like to challenge you to have a go at modern harness, sure. modern armour <laughs> uh, used by modern military, ceramic plates, Kevlar. What do you reckon? Yeah, we'll see how we go. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> Right, <laughs> you're going to have a look. Wow, that's interesting. So this is modern Kevlar. So this is the fragmentation protection. This is a kind of fabric, um, but this is the plate. And I, I think you Just hit it there. in there, yeah. You Should can we... see a tiny little scratch on there. Just a scratch, let's have a look. Right. It's not really done anything, I don't think. It's a um, little impact point, but no mold, real damage. No real damage there at all. So. It's a good thing because it would be insane to think that a modern ceramic plate <laughs> couldn't withstand a longbow shot, but yeah. Although here you can see this has penetrated all the way through both sides and just been stopped right at the back here. So, by the so material. if there was a person in there, that would have, um, that would have done a lot of damage. And the same, Actually, this one the same here. there, just skimmed the through. edge. Yeah. And then you can see the impact point, <laughs> the one where you actually got him in the shoulder, where he's got no armour at all here. It's gone all the way through and straight out the back by quite a substantial margin. You can and see what the uh, ceramic plate's done to the head. Oh, it's actually, <laughs> it's completely... It's not only completely flattened the front of the head where it stopped it dead, but uh, it's broken the haft. 
So all that energy has gone into deforming the head yeah. and then baking and then the wood. Breaking up the wood, yeah. And as you said, the tail of the arrow follows and pushes it through. And... Exactly. It comes through in a sort of snaking motion as it tries to get in. So as it's found no real purchase first, it's been stopped dead. And then it's just concertined itself in. You can see how it's moved it completely to the side on the arrow. Yeah. You can see how that's shifted down. Yeah, brilliant. So we know that up to a point, modern ceramic plate protects you from longbow arrows. But now let's reverse things. Let's go indoors into a shooting range and let's see what modern weapons do against medieval armor as well as modern armor. Hello Adrian, nice to, nice to see you. We are here at the Tunnel Target Sports Centre which is an indoor range, it's fantastic for our experiments. We have been playing around with longbows against right. medieval armour sure. and we're here today to use your expertise. So what are we going to try and do? Well, on our 100 metre indoor range, you've got a couple of targets that you're setting up. One of them is a set of medieval armour. Right, and we don't think that's going to withstand bullets. We don't think no. that's going to stop modern rifle bullets, no. But you've got a set of Kevlar armour with ballistic ceramic plate in. And that's maybe the equivalent of medieval armour against medieval weapons. So we're going to see if that will stop modern rifle bullets for so you. Obviously, that armour is designed for that particular threat. Medieval armour is designed for medieval threats. Yep. This is modern rifles against modern armour. So right. I've just got to hit the target, though. Uh, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm, hit the I'm target, sure so you'll be see, fine. <laughs> let's see how we go and do it. OK. Right, we're down here in the tunnel. Fantastic place that it is. We've got a couple of targets here. And Adrian, you're going to tell us a little bit about what we're going to be trying to do. So modern, medieval. That's right. right. Yeah, absolutely, Jason, yes. So uh, you've got two sets of armour, individual uh, armour, as might have been used uh, by soldiers, I guess, in the medieval period and uh, much more recently. And there's this, this is kind of Kevlar, a Kevlar vest. Yep. And then this is a looks like a ceramic plate. plate, yes. So within this part of the cover, there's a succession of layers of Kevlar, right. specially interwoven to provide resistance for ballistic strikes. So the idea of armour isn't to immediately stop the, the thing, it's no. to slow the threat down and try yep. and absorb some of the energy from it, which is exactly what the medieval sure. layers do. Right. And it seems very similar to the okay. modern. Yeah, and then where this might be a little different is that if you're expecting a particularly powerful round to be fired at you, a particularly powerful bullet to be fired, and you're able to take protective measures against that, you might insert what's in here, a, a rigid ceramic plate that'll be proof against much more powerful rounds. But because the, the, the payoff is, the ceramic plate is really heavy, it's right. dense. Yes, yeah, and that is yeah, trying to do, yeah. that is trying to stop things more or less straight away, right. although it still deforms, but it's a much denser material, therefore a lot heavier. So if you built the whole vest out of the ceramic plate, it's going to be massively difficult. And right. you might see that for a specialist military or police role, right. that you've got something that's more or less linked plates, because of course this stuff's not flexible. This, the Kevlar, has the advantage that it's flexible. Right, right, uh, okay, so that's, in that's interesting because again, we know that medieval layers were very important and depending sure. on your status and how much okay. money you had, right. you had more plate or less plate, you had mail, you, you had just plates and just layers and layers of linen. Right. And it's interesting, you've got layers and layers of cloth yep. in this modern device, albeit yep. specialist cloth. Yep. You had layers and layers of cloth sure. in the medieval thing. It's just a different type of cloth. Same sort of thinking. But they, uh, but they are also both designed to have some kind of effect on war weapons yep. of the time. So we talk yes. about longbow and lance. Yep. Now you've got some ferocious looking <laughs> machines behind you there. Do you want to take us through what those are yes. and what they can do? Certainly, yes. So we've two rifles here. Uh, this one is based upon the American AR-15 design. And just quickly, what's the, what's the yellow thing for? What so does that do? Both rifles have got uh, safety blocks in. In this case, this one's fitted in the magazine well, uh, and you can see the flags sticking out through yeah. the uh, aperture here. Uh, on the bolt action rifle we'll look at in a moment, it's got a breech safety flag tucked into the barrel itself, into the chamber. And, and that's because we're here on a range, uh, we're discussing the uh, 
various features of the yeah. uh, firearms and, and, the and the ammunition and the targetry here. Uh, and this just gives us a visual and physical uh, check that these firearms do not have ammunition in them. Right. So this couldn't be fired. In fact, the rifle won't operate whilst this block and its Great. safety so flags So this means we can handle this and look at it now Absolutely. and it's completely yeah, it's safe. It's still really good practice to make sure, as I'm doing now, <laughs> that this still doesn't point at anybody. And it feels much better for me if you just Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and it okay. might not be immediately yeah. obvious to everybody else, but that way yes. is the way on this range that yeah. the people shoot. Right. Okay. <laughs> so it's pointing down the range. So, Brilliant. Yeah, yeah that's, all, that's all the safety. Great. So this, so, is, this is an AR-15. Uh, this is very similar to a large number of of American and some British service rifles in use by military forces and right. police, law enforcement forces. This specific rifle is designed for the civilian shooting market here in the United Kingdom. And that means that although it has a similar operating system, actually it has to be loaded between each shot. So there's an operating mechanism to load each round. It doesn't right. self-load. Because of our gun laws That's right. in yes. a particular, That's yeah, right. particular yeah. configuration. Yeah. So this rifle is chambered for the 223 inch Remington round and that's the commercial equivalent of the 5.56 by 45 NATO round right. which is yeah. it's all very complicated <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 but what I'm essentially saying to you is that this rifle fires the same round that a soldier and a number of police officers in the UK would be equipped with so you've got another machine that another looks rifle. quite different yes so this rifle has a bolt action to it. Mm -hmm. That means that there's a magazine going to go up here in due course when we're going to fire the rifle. And each round will be loaded by pushing the bolt forward, pushing the bolt down, then it's uh, able to be fired. There's a safety catch here that will need to come off. And then to load the next round, the bolt comes up and comes back. Now, that's a firing mechanism, an operating mechanism that's going to be really familiar to soldiers from as long ago as the 1880s, 1890s. Right, right. And the reason it's used now is because it still continues to lock at the front end here. Uh, there are some lugs and they lock into the breech of the barrel and that's really solid. So that gives great consistency shot to shot. So would you say that was more accurate than that? This rifle has capacity to be more accurate so than that <laughs> rifle. Well, yes. the Whether the individual... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. We're okay. going to see in a moment, yeah. aren't we? But yeah. this design of rifle uh, has greater accuracy potential, and that's why they're still in service now, typically right. in sniping or rifle officer modes. Right, fantastic. And that's going to shoot a bigger round. It is, is yeah. Right. This one's chambered for the 0 0.308 inch, so 0 0.223 inch. This is 0 0.308 inch uh, Winchester cartridge, and that's the commercial equivalent or similar to the 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO round. So the larger type of ammunition, in fact, uh, was more commonplace for infantry soldiers to use that uh, say 30 years ago, right. but because it's a larger round to carry fewer of them, more recoil uh, and so on, there's been a move to adopt the 5.56 by 45 so, round. So what do you think we're going to do to... I have a suspicion <laughs> that the medieval stuff will be totally destroyed. Yeah. I'd be very surprised if it isn't. Um, okay. But we, we've got to try it. We've got to try sure, it. Sure, absolutely. And then the modern stuff with this bigger round, this... Yeah, so it is quite possible that this round will penetrate this part of the armour, yeah. but I am quite hopeful that the ceramic plate will be able to stop this round. That's going to be really interesting to see. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated. We, we look at armour in the context of the weapons that it's going sure. up against. There's no point wearing medieval armour <laughs> if you're going up against somebody <laughs> with guns, which is why guns became so popular yeah, sure. and why the knight in armour lost his supremacy on the right. battlefield, yeah. rather sadly, um, <laughs> from my perspective. Yes. Um, the supreme military offensive ranged weapon in medieval times was the crossbow, uh, potentially the siege crossbow and the, and the longbow. And they had a draw weight of up to 180 pounds, which is yeah. quite a lot if you've ever tried to use them. You need to be strong and yeah. fit to actually shoot it. Yeah. These, would you describe these as the equivalent of the longbow for modern day? I mean, it's a bit of a strange question, but. I see where you're going with it, Jason, and I would suggest that this is the equivalent of your 180 pound draw weight longbow, and probably the uh, 5.56 round, the 223 Remington in that case, is something 
It would be a bow, but not a... Like a hunting bow, a hunting hunting bow, bow, like a practical thing you could go hunting with or something like that. Would cause injury, of course, could cause fatality, in fact, may be used for that purpose, but wouldn't have the same penetrating capability uh, as the ammunition fired by this rifle. Right, well, as somebody who's familiar with with (laughs) rifles, I think you should put that down um, carefully, and then we should set up and have a go and see what it does to our targets. Of course. Thank you for that, that's really interesting. The range is clear, the live rounds being loaded in the magazine into the rifle. Well, um, well, we've done quite a lot of damage. This poor old medieval knight, um, he hasn't had a lot of chance. That's my lance impact. A lot more denting yeah. there. What's that one then? That's the 5.56, the 223 Remington. That was your first round, so that's gone straight. In fact, you can see some of the debris of the bullet jacket. Ah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. the lead core's gone through, but the jacket has some of the jacket scraped off as it's cut through the. Yeah, and it's just there's a, yeah. there's a bit of flaring on the inside there, and it's right. gone straight through the mail. Yes, you can see uh, some of the disrupted rings actually yeah. coming inside, yeah. And then this is the larger round. That's right, the 0.38 Winchester, the equivalent of the 7.6 T by 51 NATO round, yeah. And that's, well, you can see the hole's a lot larger. <laughs> <laughs> but that's done the same, started to split the steel as well, and some of the casing, sorry, some of the bullet. Um, Jacket has again just come off as yeah, it's gone through. Off as it's gone through, and it's yeah. just gone straight through out the back. Yeah, you can see the exit. Yeah, so, that side, can't you? so the reason guns were invented. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. So I think um, let's compare it to some of the yeah. modern stuff. Because so, there's a reason why there's a ceramic plate <laughs> as well. well. What's interesting though, this is steel. It's punched holes. Yep. But if you took that off a dead body and yeah. kind of put a bit of patch over it, yeah. it would still work as a steel breastplate yeah, for you. Yeah, the rest of it. Yeah. The rest okay. of it. You, know, yeah. you wouldn't want to get shot in the same place again. Okay, sure. Um, but that's interesting. So... Yes. So that's the ceramic plate that we looked at a while back. And that's a strike from the 5.56 millimetre round. So that's the, imp- that's the equivalent of that round That's there. exactly right, right. yeah. And uh, you can see, actually, on the reverse of it, although there's no exit of a projectile, actually there's a huge bulge there. Yeah. So you would get a traumatic injury from that, but the entire round has been contained within the ceramic plate, although the little bits of ceramic material are now shattered, yeah, and you're getting yeah. them to fall out on your yeah. hands. So, yeah. Yeah. so that plate would take separate strikes, but not in the same place. Right. It's disintegrated now, yeah. it can't so- function. Yeah, so I suppose it's just got a hole in it and the other places would, yeah. as you said, take the impact. And this yeah. was the Kevlar as well. So yep. So this was the larger round, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, this, this strike here on that yeah. ballistic plate. Yeah, you might want to take that out and let's just Shall see we? what's happened to the plate. It's a bit okay. gruesome. All right, do you want to grab that? Yeah, that's sure. It. So that's the larger round, slightly larger hole, isn't it? Yeah, 
yeah. We turn Quite it pleased over. with my shooting as yeah, well. We, actually, well. We, yeah, we hit the target, shot. not too good bad. Shooting. Good shooting. But look at that. Yeah, look at the size of that defamation. Now, we were expecting... Uh, potential penetration of yeah. the bullet through the back of this. We haven't quite got that, but when you compare... Yeah, you see the ceramic coming out. When you compare the two, mm. look at the difference in that. That yeah, is a significant trauma wound. It's, it's almost gone through, hasn't it? Yeah, it absolutely. Feels, it feels absolutely. like... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so would that have shattered more of the... Yeah, more, more of that of ceramic. Plate. That ceramic plate is now disrupted. Uh, yep. It's not going to be able to function properly. It's done its job. It's yeah. done its job really well, actually, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah it has. Um, that's it now. It, that's over with, so... So you'd need to, well, you'd need to replace, yeah. <laughs> you'd replace all of that. Yeah. And you may just well. recall that, of course, you fired a round deliberately over here. Yes. Um, good shot again. Thank you. Thank well you. Done. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you yeah. Thanks yeah. for the nice yeah. shooting. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Making for the, the rifles look yeah. good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's gone straight through the Kevlar, as we thought it might, straight through this side. Oh, yeah. Straight in the back and straight out there. Right, with the yeah. tufting of, so as it slowed down, it's pulling pulling material. That's right, it. and we know it came out yeah. because it punched a hole uh, in the screening at the back before it hit the butt. So basically, our hypothesis that bullets go through medieval knight's armour is absolutely proven. Sure. Yep. Yes, that's really yep. not much hope. But modern armour does its job pretty yeah. well. The, the Kevlar's not designed to stop the bullet, as we discussed earlier. Um, it'll have slowed it down, of course. It's beginning to do its job. A lot of Kevlar would eventually stop it. The plates do that job, uh, and they've, they've done it. They've, they've I'm, I'm, well. I'm quite impressed, so well done, modern technology. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and don't forget to use that notification button and we'll see you next time.